Welcome everyone to meet the master series. Today we have with us Dr. Tristan Johnson from Northeastern University. He is the executive director of Engineering Education Initiatives in the Graduate School of Engineering at Northeastern University. He earned his PhD in Educational Technology from Purdue University. So welcome, uh, welcome Dr. Tristan. Um, I would request you to tell us about the programs at Northeastern and one small request to all the participants so while he is talking and he is um, telling us about the program through the presentation is going on please don't type in your questions yet we will open the floor to Q&A after the presentation is done so uh, uh, Tristan, uh, Dr. Tristan you can start with your presentation very good thank you very much Giovanni it's a pleasure to be here with you all this morning and to uh, welcome you and to thank Jamboree for their time and effort to put on this presentation. It's a pleasure to share with you guys uh, about Northeastern and also hopefully at the end of the presentation and also after your questions that you can have a good sense of where you're going and of how the options at Northeastern or even other universities can provide for you in how you are pursuing and developing and starting your career. I've had the I've had the pleasure of working for Northeastern for the past six years. I think I'm in my 20th year of working in academia and the things that I talk about today hopefully will hit home and provide you with the information and also the insights that will be valuable for you in making decisions at the end of the day. Um, as you can see, this is a picture of me, a recent picture of me, and so you can get a sense for what I look like. I think they photoshopped my, my picture a little bit because I'm typically not that tan. But anyway, nonetheless, I like to tease. Um, this is a picture of how I currently look. So our agenda for the next um, kind of the presentation part of the proportion of this, of this presentation is why Northeastern, also our engineering programs, and then also, what are the next steps for you? After that, we'll take questions and, and happy to address some of your uh, comments also. So why Northeastern? Northeastern is a one of the top 50 best national universities as reported by US News and World Report. I believe we're number 40 or 41. <coughs> this number fluctuates, but we're very proud to have a very top institution. We are a comprehensive university, um, a research university, where our faculty and um, are working towards bringing innovation, conducting research, and then also bringing that to the classroom and helping the students learn and also see what the latest is in innovation. So very, very important. One of the other factors that drew me to Northeastern was its ability to actually help students prepare for the careers. We do. We are considered one of the top four career service uh, universities. We've ranked in the top four for the past five years by the Princeton Review. I actually um, track this a little bit. Um, the Wall Street Journal has put us in the top ten. It fluctuates depending on the rating, but we're very, very proud of our ability to provide career services to help our students not only gain an education, but then help them to launch that into uh, a job or employment options. We are a top engineering school in the US. We are over 100 years old. Matter of fact, Northeastern was founded by MIT engineers or uh, doctor uh, MIT students who graduated and then wanted to stay in Boston, wanted to look at options. But we are actually 119 years old. Um, and we are in a very, very beautiful place in Boston. I was out on campus today and meeting with um, a consultant that we had come in. And it's just a very vibrant community, wonderful place to, 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 uh, to work. Also, <coughs> just down the street, we have a very, very wonderful Museum of Fine Arts. The other way up the street, we have one of the best orchestras in the world, the Boston Symphony. If you go uh, a mile another direction, you have the Boston Red Sox, Fenway Park, 
Um, we also are in, 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 anyway, it's just a vibrant area to actually live and work, and so I appreciate that. We are one of the first engineering colleges to implement what we call a co-op, or what we call a cooperative education. And I want to speak to this just a little bit here. So the programs that I represent, I'll go into more detail, but I also oversee the cooperative education for those programs. So Northeastern was founded by these engineers, and they wanted to have the ability to provide educational opportunities beyond just the classroom to the students. And so they developed and have had what we call cooperative education. This has been around for some time. <coughs> and actually, what is not known is that the undergraduate level, all of our students are required to go on co-op. At the graduate level, it was optional. It is still optional at this time, but we do have a lot of students who choose to go on co-op. And we actually have a large number of faculty who actually support the development of students to go on co-op. So this is a very, very big thing. So keep in mind, this is where we're at. Northeastern, educating the future workforce is important, but also preparing them to actually not only be educated, but to actually get and to actually apply what they've learned in the workforce. And so with that in mind, not only are we actually trying to understand what industry needs are, we're helping our students so that they can actually find co-op positions where they can actually go on a six-month, it's a typically about a six-month position, anywhere between four and eight months, where students actually go out into the workforce and they are working for a company, getting paid. Uh, the majority, 99% of the, the co-op positions are paid co-ops. So not only can you come to Northeastern, get a great education, but also have the opportunity, the opportunity to be able to go into the workforce, practice what you've learned, get paid for it, and then you come back to school and finish your education. So very, very valuable. And we see that also the students who go on co-op, it gives them a foot up or somewhat of an advantage when they go and to seek a full-time job after the co-op. Plus, the companies that we're working with are very interested in meeting our students as a pipeline for future employment. So, for example, one of my uh, former teaching assistants, Ayush, uh, worked for a company as a co-op, and he was recently hired to also work with that company in a full-time employment. So very, very advantageous and beneficial. So I wanted to share that with you. As far as, as, far as the, some of uh, the numbers, um, this, this past year in the area of graduate co-op that I oversee, we had more than 300 students get placed in some technical skills position um, as related to part of their educational programs. So co-op is not only a job and employment, it is also in an area that's related to your graduate degree program. That's very, very important. Also, as mentioned in the slide here, there's more than 250 companies that have hired our graduate engineering uh, students within the last three years. So it's not only for co-op, but also for hiring after the degree program. A few companies that have hired our students um, as you can see here, this is just a small sampling. I have a whole entire list, but anybody from a Amazon to Oracle to IBM to Raytheon, State Street, it goes on and on. But a lot of the big players, and some of these players are big in Boston, and some of them are big in other parts of the country on the West Coast. By the way, we do have a campus for the um, – we do have a campus in um, – a few other cities, specifically in Seattle and also in Silicon Valley in, in, in the state of California, where we have determined that there are specific employment needs out there. And by the way, before we were even in those areas, our students would go on co-ops out there. So whether you come to Boston or go to Seattle, if you come to Boston, you can take a co-op wherever a position is in the U.S. So sometimes our students about 20% um, of our students go out of state from this, the location in which they're at. 
but then again, a lot of them stay in state. And as you, I don't know if you know exactly, but there is large industry in Boston on the East Coast and also the West Coast. And so this is one of the reasons why we have a campus presence in those areas. Obviously, our main campus is in Boston. That's our, that's our um, flagship campus, so keep that in mind. One of our success stories for co-op was um, Juliet Moradi. Um, this was just last year. And as she says, it's not just about what you learn in class, but applying it in different settings. On co-op, I was learning totally different skills, and I was learning what would be valuable in any setting, not just in my major. So this is where she took what was in her, in, in her classroom, applied it, and extended it, which is very, very important. One of the other factors to consider when you're uh, coming to Northeastern, and these are some numbers here, the average tuition cost for a graduate engineering degree is about 45. If you look at the analysis that we've done and we talked to our students, and this is a conservative number here, the students entering the workforce with a master's are going to earn about $86,000 a year. So you can see that over a period of about two years, one could, um, well, with living expenses, you could probably recoup the expenses you had on your on your graduate degree. So very, very important to consider. And this is one of the things, of, of like any professional degree, whether it's law or medicine, students are typically fully funding their degree program, but the advantages in what they get done and the cost and wages of salary for them are, are very, very important. As an international student, on your um, on your F1 visa, you can actually not only do a co-op, which you're earning money. And by the way, when you're on co-op, you're not paying tuition. But also, when you're done, you can do a three-year what we call OPT, where you can work in the U.S. on that visa for a three-year period of time, earning approximately eighty-six thousand dollars. Again, it depends on the areas. Um, we oftentimes hear of students who are getting sign-up packages for $120,000, $150,000. Again, it depends on how competitive they are, how advanced they are, uh, but making some good money <coughs> and being able to actually repay their, their, um, their investment on their tuition. So very, very important to consider. Another factor to consider coming to Northeastern is student life. Engineering has over 30 unique organizations. These are things from honor societies to having um, uh, competitions to having professional societies to having affinity groups. And so there's a lot of things not only to take classes but to get involved with other like-minded individuals on academic levels. And then also there's a number of things in the Boston area that are close to home where you can enjoy. Like I mentioned earlier, there's some fascinating things. We have, um, let me get out my pen tool here. We have the Charles River. Actually, this weekend is regatta, which they do um, uh, racing, uh, boat race close by, a famous museum of fine arts. We have the Pearl Necklace, the zoo, also Boston Gardens. We have the library, and we have other hockey teams and so forth. So very, very popular, all in a really tightly knitted area. Very, very enjoyable. A lot of energy, a lot of uh, vibrancy, and so very, very fun and enjoyable to kind of be involved in the Boston area. Okay, so you're probably very, very interested in what are our engineering programs and how can they apply to you. I represent um, the multidisciplinary graduate engineering programs, and these include the following, computer systems engineering, energy systems, engineering management, information systems, telecommunication systems management, which has just been renamed to telecommunication networks, and also a new concentration called the Internet of Things. And so I want to take a moment and go over all of these here. Keep in mind, these are all Masters of Science degrees, and most of these are populated um, by students who have an a, a undergraduate degree in engineering, and in a lot of cases, they're a mix of engineering degrees. Again, these are multidisciplinary. And so it's pulling engineers from electrical, mechanical, industrial, civil, environmental, 
um, computer engineering, etc. So we see this quite a bit. And it's not so much specified of what type of undergraduate degree, but we do, um, we do focus on in advancing engineering skills. And so very, very important. Let's go ahead and take a look at, at each one of these individually here. One of our very, very most important degrees that's very technical is our computer systems engineering master's degree. This concentration produces software engineers who really get into the notion of implementing large-scale and industry-specific information and communication infrastructures. So these folks, their coursework is all technical, the engineering tools. Some of the focuses are, the main focus is advanced software design and architecture. This goes beyond just programming. And it's also in areas such as healthcare, sustainability, finance, infrastructure, such as power grid or transportation systems. So the application can go into a wide array of areas. Very, very important. There's, um, this is one of the smaller programs, but people that have the, they have the engineering background and want to actually develop advanced software design and architecture, this would be a great program. There's a strong need for this in industry, and we do see a lot of success in students getting placed on co-op and also job opportunities when they're done. The next program I want to highlight is our energy systems program. This is an interesting one. This is probably what I like to call a niche program. Very, very, very tight where it's dealing specific um, with systems within the energy sector. Obviously, um, energy is very, very understandable as far as where its focus is. We are typically looking at um, renewable and non-carbon producing energy systems, if you will. But the one thing I'd like to talk about this is this is really a systems analysis degree. You are looking at a system and analyzing it. The system happens to be energy. Also, you will take courses in the practical application of engineering technology. You will not become engineers who build or design the technology, but you will apply the technology. So you will learn about uh, uh, the generation of, of electricity from a wind turbine, but you don't necessarily have the skills to design and implement the wind turbine, but you know what it will produce, you know the capabilities, you know the weaknesses, the strengths, how it could be brought into a whole system to co-generate electricity or provide energy, <coughs> and this is where this, this system takes you. They also look at other renewables, photovoltaics, they also look at energy storage, and this is a, a very interesting program. If you want to go into the energy sector, this is a big one. We see a number of students from India in this program because of the emphasis on renewables in India, and so we do have a, a large Indian population. We do also have a this is this this program has uh, about 120 students. It's not super large but they have a phenomenal student association, which we're actually trying to replicate in some of the other areas. Very, very interesting if you're interested in systems analysis related to energy systems. Okay, another area that's been very popular is our engineering management program. This is, uh, we, we see a need for professionals who have management skills and engineering knowledge. When we go into technical environments, the companies really want to have and hire employees or workers who have the technical knowledge, but also who can actually manage. So this program here is geared to help that. So the program focuses on not only theoretical, but also quantitative and analytical skills. At the end, you apply mathematical decision-making skills to solve business issues. Very, 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 very challenging, and this program actually builds those skills. One of the ways I like to think about of, uh, of this program is being an MBA for engineers. MBAs, however, are admitting students from many, many disciplines. Engineering management accepts students that are engineers. So the leveling period in an MBA program is omitted because every engineer has standard backgrounds. They can go right into the decision-making 
the mathematical modeling, the quantitative, the analytical skills. <clears throat> if you want to think about it, this is almost like a data ana analytics and decision-making type of a program. Very, very interesting. There's a lot of companies out there that need these skills. This is not so much managing people, although there are a few classes which you can take that get at the human aspects of managing. This is actually my expertise. I, I'm teaching a project management class. I'm also teaching a engineering team performance class. We also teach an engineering organizational psychology class, helping the engineers in this program look at the aspects of dealing with humans. But on the whole, you will have strong decision-making, analytical data-driven, analytical decision-making skills if you attend this program and graduate. Very, 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 very interesting. Okay, moving along here, our next program I want to highlight is our information systems program. This is a program that is enhancing, as we say, IT knowledge to improve real-world business operations and connect computer scientists with practical business skills, blending both an engineering and business approach to simulate how complex problems are solved in the real and the business world. So as you read here, this is a software design, software engineering type of a program. You will become a software developer. However, like the computer systems engineering program, except in this case here, you're also integrating those skills with, with business analytics, also with um, dealing in, with understanding the business complexities, and also trying to come up with the integration to solve the actual problems. Very, very interesting. But this is designed for engineers who desire to make a career shift into the information systems field. And what we see is this is, if, uh, a lot of engineers want to go into software, but computer science programs don't want to take them because they don't have the background. This program is specifically geared for engineers who want to develop those software engineering skills. This is a very, very popular program. This is um, probably one of our most successful. Within this program, there are several tracks from, front, um, from user design to full stack, to data, um, database design, to cloud computing, to big data, to, um, to quality control or quality assurance. Um, so it has a broad array of skills. You come in here, there's one required course, and then everything else is based on the track that you want to go into. But we see that a lot of companies want engineers with software skills, and these are the types of students that they hire in information systems. Also, we do have some students that are in other majors, such as engineering management, who will take a software development or software programming course from information systems. So very, very interesting, one of our more popular programs, and we're pleased to have and see that develop. This degree program is the only one that is, out, that is not only in Boston, but is at our, and it is being offered at our, our Seattle campus. We have about 100 students in Seattle, and we are also starting a uh, January cohort in Silicon Valley, and that will grow. We'll probably have 20 or 30 students this first semester, and that will grow over time because of the demand and the needs. So this is a very, very interesting program. Okay, moving along here. One second. Let me get my screen back up. Our next program is our Telecommunications Systems Management Program, renamed or updated to be uh, Telecommunication Networks. This is one of our few programs, and nationwide one of the fewest programs, to be truly multidisciplinary, where they're bringing um, courses from engineering, computer science, and business administration. What you're really looking at is network systems integration from all those areas, also looking at data network standards. This is a very interesting program. And <clears throat> one of the things that was interesting is we had a, a low enrollment on this last year because people were saying that there's not a need for this. And yet our students in this program are consistently getting co-op opportunities and being um, getting hired full time when they're done. This is still a growing area. There's still a demand for this. 
It is technical in nature, related to telecommunication networks, but still very, very valuable. The name, again, was renamed Telecommunication Networks because it is really focused on that aspect less so than the management. So it more accurately describes where we're trying to push that program. Still great demand for this in the U.S. And then our most recent program is the Internet of Things. This is one that I had a hand in and very, very interested. This is a new, new degree. There are no um, degree programs that we could find specifically titled Internet of Things. Obviously, this has been around for some time in industry for the past, been hot for at least five years. But really, this is where we meet the demands for this new kind of specialist, one that can engineer new interactive services, acquisition, fuse, and process the data connected from sensors, controllers, and other devices, and develop architectures to interconnect all these elements as a part of a larger, more diverse system. So what we're seeing here is engineers that are actually pulling these things together and the process, the data collected from these things, these sensors, this is what things are referring to, and interconnect these as a larger part of a more diverse system. One of the big challenges with the Internet of Things is there's not, there hasn't been time to really fully develop all of the standards. Companies are pushing for these. There's a pervasive um, a, a set of standards that are not common. And so part of this program is not only to understand this fusion, this interconnection of the sensors and software, but also to understand the standards, how to play with the standards as they are now. And this will evolve over time, by the way, but very important. <coughs> this program was just started this past fall. We had a large cohort, starting cohort, very successful, and are very, very pleased with the progress of this master's degree program. Okay, so I've covered the six multidisciplinary graduate engineering degree programs. Um, also Northeastern, in the traditional programs, we have civil, we have environmental, we have mechanical, we have industrial, we have electrical, we have computer. Um, engineering degrees and all of the sub or the concentrations within those um, disciplines at a master's degree level that you could consider. So it's up to you, um, but the ones I presented are the integration, the ones that are specifically designed for preparation to go out into the workforce. Another factor that I want to share with you is we offer certificate programs. Certificate programs are 16 semester hours worth of coursework and these factor in the areas of data and communications technology, also energy, also engineering management, business and leadership, and also supply chain and process management. There's a series more than um, more than 20 separate certificates that fall under these four categories that you could take. Now here's how this works real quick. If you choose you want to come here and only do a certificate, we can issue a visa. You can come here, take uh, your 16 semester hours, and graduate with a certificate, and then go out and work or go back home, whatever you want to do. Also, or you could come to Northeastern under a master's degree program, and as part of that master's degree program, if it's a multidisciplinary graduate engineering degree program, you could actually couple on one of these certificates to be part of that, take no additional coursework and graduate with a master's and a graduate certificate for the same cost, same time, same price. And so that could be a strong value to you all as you consider um, the program options here. Real quick, there is a chat that I'm focusing and the question is what's the difference between a certificate course and a master's degree program? The certificate program is essentially half of a master's degree. Um, it is, industry would recognize it as such, um, but basically some students want to do only um, a few courses and get that. Some want a full master's. Um, it depends what, what, your, what companies want, etc. Most students 
international students will come and do a master's degree program and build into that program a certificate. It's what we call double counting. And a master's, a certificate is not equivalent to a master's. It's much more abbreviated, and industry knows that. But if you only want a specific focus area and not more breadth, you could do a certificate, get those courses. And if you're marketable and companies want to hire you, then, then that's great. Um, you could also get a certificate program, go and work, and decide, you know what, I want to complete the master's. That's what we call stackable. These certificates do stack into their related master's degree programs. For example, any of these here you could take and stack it into a um, uh, uh, the master's degree in engineering management. Also, a lot of these you can stack into um, the energy systems degree program. So it just depends. And those are some things to think about. At the very end of the presentation, I will share with you a URL which you can go and check this out in more detail. And so you can actually look at the, uh, the, the nuances. So keep that in mind. This is something that we're actually proud of. This is an initiative that I worked on. What it's really trying to do is energy or energy systems or even engineering management are very, very broad. But when you actually go and apply for jobs, you want to have some specific skill sets, and the, the certificates help with that also. By the way, you could take the courses and not call a certificate, um, but this is one way to help you brand as you're going out to job and seeking for jobs when you complete your degree program. Okay, so what are the next steps for you? We talked about the programs, the certificates. What do you need to do next? So here's some things to consider. We have some fall, our mission deadlines for the fall are as follows. Um, if you're an international student applying outside the U.S., you have a January 15th and an April 15th deadline. And that's the audience that we're talking to now. The April 15th, if you want consideration early on, then you want to apply earlier. The review, the review cycles are approximately every two weeks. If you're a strong candidate, you'll get your decision sooner. And if you're a weaker candidate, sometimes they will hold on and wait to see what the pool comes in. But by April 15th, they review all of the applications and make decisions for sure. Everybody, this is like the last time. So you can apply. The, the review cycle starts between April 15th and really ends between eight, uh, January 15th, rather, starts. If you apply before January 15th, um, there's typically a little or no consideration. So um, January 15th for sure and, and ending on April 15th. Those are the ones you want to kind of consider for next fall. If for some reason you wanted to apply for the spring, we're out of cycle now, September 15th with this date. If you don't apply for next fall, but you want to apply for the spring after, Again, September 15th would be the deadline. For the application requirements, and again, <coughs> these are some things you need to think about. You look at schools, this is just the way Northeastern does it. This is pretty standard. You complete an online application form. It's at a website. You pay your $75. You have two letters of recommendations. You also provide your transcripts. You have a statement of purpose. You have a resume. You also have your GRE official results and your TOEFL. So that's a lot there to think about. But let me kind of point out a couple things. What really, really, really matters the most, okay, are really your uh, your your GPA or transcripts from uh, from your colleges, right? What were your academic performance in undergrad, and also your GRE quantitative score. Those two are probably the most critical. We look at those first, and then basically try to kind of separate, are they are they admissible or not? And if they're on the borderline, then they'll go to things such as the statement of purpose, to the resume, to the confidential letters, and so forth, to provide evidence to try to see if, if there's any hope or, or more data from these other um, data points to, to, to merit providing an act, uh, a letter of admissions. The TOEFL they look at, <coughs> this is basically you either have it or you don't. If you don't have it, by the way, Indian students tend to do a lot better. If you don't have it, there's a couple options for developing that, a, a program that is tied to the university not or affiliated with the university. But on the whole, uh, Indians do pretty good. But um, you either have the 79 or you don't. If you have a, um, 
If you have a 79, then it's good. If you have a 78, it's not good. So keep that in mind. Um, but again, at the end of the day, your transcripts and your academics, what we call our grade point average, GPA, is important. And I'm, so your GPA is important and also your GRE quantitative score. The verbal score could be used to help support or find evidence to admit you, but typically not to, um, to um, deny you. Okay, real quick, I, I got a couple questions here. Um, someone's going to be trying out for project management as I am keen interest to study and even worked around um, three and a half years. That's great. Um, someone's trying to look at regulatory affairs for Northeastern. Um, so regulatory affairs is a part of the College of Professional Studies. Their application requirements are going to be very similar, but the thresholds for the GRE and the TOEFL will be different. So make sure you check out their website to figure out what their needs are. As far as project management, the question is, there is a Master's of Science in Project Management, which is different from the Master's of Science in Engineering Management. So if um, Singh will actually ask any more questions, I can actually uh, direct and kind of help you understand the difference between those two. Um, just go ahead and type in your question when you're ready. Okay, so we're ready to take some questions here. I'm going to, I'm going to actually, as you're preparing your questions, I'm going to jump to the very, very end. If you're still deciding, here's the one place to go. Visit www.coe dot neu dot edu slash grant info. This is a portal which my team has set up to help get you information in deciding if Northeastern is the right um, program for you, if it's the right university and program for you. So look at that and check that out. Very, very, very important site. Here you'll get access to not only the website and, and, and to pointing to the degree program, but also there's a list of student ambassadors that you could email or Skype with or who's app or what's up with and get more information. Talking to the students is very, very important. We hire them to specifically provide additional information. We try to have them be, we, we, they are truthful. They're not trying to oversell, but if you have specific questions, those are the people to go to. Also, if you have application questions, you can visit husky.desk.com. Husky is the name of the mascot for Northeastern.desk.com, and there's a list of frequently asked questions about the application, about, about travel, about housing. This is also another good site to check out. So these are some places to check out. So with that, I've hit the main points, but happy to answer questions and go into more details to help you guys get information about Northeastern University and the programs, the master's programs. So what are your questions? How can I help you? Uh, right, right, uh, right, Dr. Tristan. So that was very informative. So all of you um, attendees can type your questions and we'll be happy to take them. So meanwhile, I have some questions which we usually get from students who are applying. So um, there are some students who have a three-year undergraduate degree versus a four-year one, like a BSc or a BCom. So are those students accepted at Northeastern? Can they apply? So this has been a question that we've gotten multiple times, and we are trying to work on a pipeline to address that. Currently, there's not an easy way to actually have those students admitted. Here's the challenge. Um, the students um, coming in, it's not, it's not the time necessarily as it is the coursework. So let me just tell you this. If you have a three-year degree, and you've taken all four semesters of your mathematics, right? Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and then Diffie Q. If you've taken those courses, then you should apply. That's, that's just my standard response. And that's because in order to be successful in the master's program in engineering, 
you're going to need the mathematical in, uh, background to be successful in the coursework. It's just the way it is in engineering. So I would say I, if I encourage students to apply. When they look at your GPA, they do look at your math scores, and that's how they determine if you're prepared or not, and that would be the deciding factor. Meanwhile, some schools don't require all those for a three-year degree. Some do, and so that's why we, I can't say definitively. But if you have the, if you have four semesters, um, on, again, calculus one, calculus two, calculus three. That calculus three is usually a multivariant calculus, and then also differential equations and or linear al algebra. Then you should be safe. So uh, consider that. Right. So are all programs, STEM programs, the ones that you've talked about, um, the engineering management, information systems? Yes. Each of the programs that I highlighted today in the multidisciplinary graduate engineering programs, also the ones that I mentioned that are in the College of Engineering, those are all, all STEM programs. Okay. The, uh, the program, the Master's of Science and Project Management, Science and Regulatory Affairs, I do not know because that's out. Of, that's not in my college. They're my colleagues in another college. Those you will need to check with them to make sure that they are STEM or not. I am not actually sure, but the ones we've talked about today are all STEM. Right. So you would qualify for the for the OPT extension. So you could actually work for three years in the U.S. when you complete your degree. Right. So, and also, what would be the chances of getting scholarship and financial aid at Northeastern? Okay, good question. So, like I mentioned, the and this is typical in the U.S. Most of the professional programs, which these represent, typically at the master's level. In engineering are all self-funded so there's most of them so basically students are investing in their own education because they have high earning potential when they get out okay so however um, if you want to be considered for there are um, a limited number of Dean scholarships that are awarded um, we have we have a large number of students that come into our programs every year. And of those, there's a small percentage that are awarded scholarships, but it's academic. So you have to have high undergraduate scores and also high GRE scores. So to be competitive for that. However, <coughs> students to fund their career, to fund their degree, one of the areas that they like to look at is one, when you come to campus, you can um, work on campus. If you come to Northeastern Boston, you have a number of options. Um, I don't know that the percentage isn't any different, but also um, you can, after you take a class, if there's a TA in the class, students could volunteer or could, could let the teacher know that they'd be willing to be a TA in a subsequent semester. And if there's an opening, then they get paid for that. So that's another option. Also, um, when you go on co-op, our co-ops are paid. There's, again, I said very few. I only know of all of the co-ops that I've been involved with for the past um, six years. I've only seen two or three that were unpaid. And there's a number of reasons for that. But we, if a company comes to us and says, I want to hire a co-op that's unpaid, we say, no, you, you need to pay the students. And, and for the value, plus we're also trying to help the students, and so this is another way. You can go on co-op and earn twenty-four to forty thousand dollars. This depends on how long you go with your pay rate. So that could be a significant amount of money to help offset the cost of your degree program. So those are the ways in which you can help offset the cost of your degree program. Also, because um, these are actually very, very um, highly sought-after skills, so we're very fortunate. Because a lot of companies want to hire students in these areas. Students do get hired. You can actually go into the workforce. Again, I like to throw out the number of 85. And, and, and you know, if you're earning $85,000 a year, you, you can keep your living expenses to a minimum. You can recoup 
definitely recoup your uh, your expenses within the time period that you're serving on OPT. So keep that in mind. Right. So I think Alok has a question around MS Energy System Engineering. What would be the scope and job perspective? Okay. So in energy systems, the scope for what you would be doing is really looking at systems, being able to work with companies. And by the way, we have a strong energy sector in, in Boston. Um, and what, the, what you'd be doing is going in and analyzing their systems to help them either optimize their energy or develop new designs or retrofit. So a lot of companies, of course, energy is still very, very important for the economy. And the, the students in these degree programs go going to work for companies to help analyze their systems to find out how to optimize them. Or if they want to add on to uh, the system a new generation source, how much is it going to cost? What's the life cycle payback? What's the prospects for revenue generation? So it's really not only, um, it's, it's an economic decision-making prospect also. So very, very important and um, could be very, very helpful. <coughs> These, um, unlike a lot of the other areas, if you are in information systems or in engineering management, you get jobs in all sectors. If you do an energy systems master's, you're going to get a job in the energy sector predominantly. However, there are exceptions. For example, I have a, uh, a relationship with uh, Bank of America, which is a large, large bank in the U.S. And the gentleman that I know there runs their energy um, analysis and energy consumption. Bank of America spends more than $1 million a day in electricity costs for their site and for their properties. One million dollars a day they spend. So they hire these these energy economists or energy analysis or energy system students or employees. They come and to try to figure out how to optimize that. If they can save one percent, that's a lot of money. So that's another application, large large sectors and so forth. So that I hope answers a lot of your questions. Um, there are a number of, of graduates or uh, students who go on co-op, and we do have strong relations with the energy sector. And that one's very, very critical because it's who you know and to break in. But most engineers aren't energy engineers necessarily, so the energy systems master's degree helps people move into that sector, develop those skills, and make those connections. Uh, uh, do you mind... Um, uh, uh, Shivani, there's no other questions. Um, I'm going to go to Ardash's question. He's completed a yes. bachelor's of engineering and civil engineering and wants to do a master's of science in the U.S. Tell me about how I can prepare or uh, for GRE or ILETS as these exams are the basic requirements for taking admissions in the U.S. So as far as preparing for a master's or the ILETS or ILS or also the GRE, there's a number of ways um, you can do that. If you're very, very dedicated, um, what I would do is I'll go to some type of service. Um, Jamboree, I'm sure, has services or can recommend where you can go for those. But guys, at the end, you can do it a couple different ways. You can either take the GRE and see how you do, or you can work hard and prepare. But at the end of the day, um, faculty, because the GRE is a standardized test and we know what the scores mean, going to be your quantitative measure on the GRE is going to be very, very important. As far as engineering, we're looking at about a 65th percentile to be very competitive. We do take people below a 65th percentile. Um, if you have high GRE math scores, that could help. It just depends. Uh, but definitely, um, I would prepare for the GRE. Make sure you talk with um, Jamboree um, and, and find out what they recommend. Also talk to your seniors, also talk to the ambassadors that's on the website that I presented. Let me go back to that page here, the www.coe.nu.edu forward slash grad info. Go there, check out the ambassadors. You can talk to them about those kinds of things. As far as your, your English uh, grammar skills, um, practice, practice, practice. Um, 
at the end of the day, taking the exam, see how you score, see where your weaknesses are. Um, a lot of companies and, and um, Devani, I don't know, does Jamboree do a yes. practice GRE yes, um, yes. exam? Yes. Do they so have others, that yeah, we uh, do have a curriculum around GRE and we provide GRE preparation services. So you can join any of our centers located around you. The center managers would be able to guide you. We have a set of books, preparatory material, everything in place. Great. Again, whether you're uh, in the US or wherever country, even here, students have to, have to take the GRE. I, did have, I took the GRE when I was going to grad school and um, we studied. Um, what you're trying to do is freshen up on the specific skills that are required for the exam parts. Um, actually, the GRE quantitative is really, um, it goes through algebra, it doesn't get into calculus, but you want to be quick and accurate. So this is the thing why you prepare. Uh, back to, we have another question from um, Tenzin. Does, any, does Northeastern have a cell biology program? They do. And you want to check out the, um, you want to search for the College of Science. And on there, they'll have biology. You can check out the cell biology program. By the way, my undergraduate was in biology, actually human anatomy um, and microbiology. And so very interesting. I went to another university but um, for that program. But yeah, check that out. Right. Okay, so um, are there any other questions? Right. So, um, I do have some final. I do have some. Yeah, go ahead. I have some final comments when we're ready to finish up. But right. Um, so, Shivani, listen, you have one, another question. Yeah, one small question I have. Have you noticed any okay. changes in the U.S. job market after Trump came to power? In terms of some international students are uh, are not are like they are they fear going to U.S. Uh, after the Trump regulation. So. Do you have any views or any take on that? Sure. This obviously was very important and very watched watch closely for um, everybody um, in, in the job market or related to career preparation and things like this. So, very, and, and we still keep, I still monitor very closely, as do many people at, at Northeastern. The one thing to consider is the the effect of what his uh, presidency was trying to carry out was mitigate um, mitigate people that are in the U.S. illegally. Um, uh, Trump's not stupid. Um, his 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 counselors are not are not ignorant. They also have been advised by industry. The U.S. economy is very much dependent on its ability to attract talent. And, and looking closely at the regulations in which they are talking about, it was not targeting skilled workers, which is what you all will be considered. They want to still retain the skilled workers in the U.S. because that's very valuable. So that I haven't seen. There were a couple companies when first things happened in the beginning of this year who were like, we don't know what's going to happen. Things have started to settle out, uh, but we are seeing a continual increase in co-op placements. Our students are still getting full-time employment when they graduate. Um, and, of course, that's all dependent on a number of factors, but there is strong industry needs for skilled workers in the U.S., to be frank. There is a job shortage in Boston and in Seattle and the West Coast for skilled labor, for skilled workers. Companies want to find talented engineers, and that's what we're trying to work on and develop. So keep that in mind as you're as you're considering Northeastern. Yep. All right. So I think one final question, other she's asking about the cost without the scholarship at Northeastern for master's program. Yeah. So if so, I'll come back to this slide here real quick. So if you are, um, what happens is at Northeastern, the actual cost, um, the actual cost is going to be about $1,500 for credit hour. 
and actually you're going to be you're going to be charged. Most degree programs are actually 32 credit hours, not 30 as listed on the slide. So you pay for each class. So if you sign up for two classes, it's eight semester credit hours, then you're going to pay approximately, um, what, $12,000. So it's just based on the classes you take. If you take extra, class, extra classes, you'll be charged more money. So if you decide to take 40 semester hours, then you're going to be charged for 40 semester hours. So most students try to come in. You understand the cost. They take just what they need to to get the degree, and then they're out. So basically, um, you're looking at about $50,000 to get a, a master's degree in Northeastern. Right. That help? Yeah, right. So I think we that's all the time we have today. So um, thank you, Dr. Tristan, for doing this for us. And I really appreciate you conducting this webinar so late in the night. And thank you all for joining us and making it an interactive webinar. Goodbye and have a great weekend.